Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Mind of Steel. This is the show all about Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. To those of us who live far away from Gateshead, Mark can safely be considered a figure of ridicule. We laugh at the crazy, unhinged things he says. We marvel at the bizarre things he does. And we well, guffaw at the ridiculous company that he keeps. And we can laugh in safety because living far away from Gateshead means that he is unlikely to come after us with a sort of murderous rampage. But what if you had the misfortune of living near to Mark? Perhaps you went to the same school as him, or maybe you work for an organisation in which he takes an interest in it. Perhaps your home is near to Mark's home. Well then, under the circumstances, you might not find not Mark to be, to be such a figure, figure of hilarity as I do. And that's the subject of today's show, because I'm talking to somebody who has grown up effectively with Mark Steele. They went to the same school together. They have lived together most of their lives. And now this person, his name is Jonathan Wallace, he has served as a councillor in Gateshead Council, the city where Mark Steele lives for a great many years. And that means Jonathan has come under the focus of Mark Steele's rage on more than one occasion. Jonathan is one of the people who have had to deal with the consequences of Mark Steele's misbehaviour. Before we start, I'd like to extend a thank you to Jonathan for agreeing to appear in this interview. He didn't have to do that, and by doing so, he exposes himself to a certain amount of risk from Mark Steele, because Mark Steele will always want to threaten and intimidate people that he believes has crossed him. And I believe that is what's going to happen as soon as Mark Steele realises that a person from his town is standing up and telling the truth about Mark Steele's ridiculous behaviour. Ah, well, please sit back and have a listen to what Jonathan has to say. I think it will be well worth your time. Um, I am Jonathan Wallace. I am a local government councillor for the well, within Gateshead. Um, that the, the council basically runs the local services, and were elected by local residents uh, to be part of that council. So that, that's how I came across. Uh, Mark Steele in recent years. You're a local politician. You're elected. Yep. You're you're somebody. It's like it's can paint a picture of what councillors do. We are um, responsible for running local services, so things like social services, schools, roads, um, dustbins, parks. Yeah, yeah. Get your dustbins emptied um, by the council as well. So it, it's the sort of local services that you need to to make um, communities function, and uh, as we are elected by uh, the local residents and uh, we're elected onto the council and the current council together runs uh, these uh, services. This is what I've brought the attention of Gated Council. The manufacturer says that's not safe at several metres to a human. Uh, and it was in that capacity that I was contacted by uh, Mark Steele uh, about uh, seven or eight years ago. And he um, phoned me up out of the blue um, to tell me about uh, how the street lights were killing people and uh, killing babies and uh, generally causing uh, mayhem. Uh, so I politely listened to him, as I do with any resident who phones me up and asks for advice or help. Um, and I thanked him for his call and at that point, the call was ended, and I thought to myself, I have heard some ludicrous rubbish before, um, but this one was really uh, taking the biscuit. You've, you've known Mark Steele since your childhood, haven't you? Yes. Uh, he went to the same school as me. Uh, we went to a secondary school called Wick Wickham Comprehensive. A uh, very big school. Uh, we weren't in the same year. Uh, so he was about three years ahead of me and he was there with his uh, twin brother Graham so I didn't really know him very well but what I do remember uh, was him 
uh, strutting around the school, the two of them strutting around the school as if they were the Cray twins. The, there was no friendship there. We were just, I, I think we were just aware that each of us was there. Um, but it was a be- very big school. It was some, some, something like 1,800 pupils. The, the Steel Twins acting or looking like the Cray Twins was uh, the one, one of the memories I've got. They, I mean, was the reference to the Cray Twins, was that to suggest that they kind of, they acted like gangsters or they actually also looked like gangsters? Well, it, it was more a case of the, the, the way they strutted around uh, as if um, they uh, were really important. Um, but I don't think anybody took them seriously. That I was always interested in weapons systems. Mm-hmm. When I was 11 year old, uh, you know, I was basically the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the cleverest guy in the school. He tells a story of when he was 11 years old and that uh, for being the the smartest boy in school, he was given some book vouchers and taken to a bookshop in Newcastle by the deputy head teacher. I went to uh, Thorne's bookshop in Newcastle with the deputy head, a guy called Morris Mears, and... I remember it quite, uh, quite interesting because they give us this voucher to buy some books. The books I bought at Thorne's Bookshop were about intercontinental uh, ballistic missiles okay. and uh, small arms. He, he claims that, that, you know, that he spent this, these vouchers on buying uh, books about weapons. Yeah, well... At the... What was it? He said it was seven pounds worth of book tokens. Oh, that would have bought a lot of books in the seventies, I yeah, imagine. Yeah. When I started at Wickham Comprehensive, I got a prize at the end of my first year, uh, and it was a book token, and it was a pound. Yeah. But it was, um, so you know, if you were getting seven quid, um, no, I'm sorry, you, know, <laughs> you might have got a quid. Now, you might have got a enough for, to buy one book, but more than that no I don't, I don't believe that yeah. between when they left school and your later encounter did you see the steals did you did you notice them at all did they impinge on your life in any uh, way well didn't quite impinge on my life but i did occasionally see them in um wickham and i think their their home was in a, a small village called streetgate uh, which is just along the road from where i live now and the um i used to i saw them um dressed in the style of the times, in these incredibly baggy uh, suits, uh, which uh, you know, it, it was just it, was, it looked as if they were wearing a suit that was uh, five times too too big for them. Uh, so uh, that 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 always sort of stuck in my memory. I just remember once walking past their house, and one of them I don't know which one it was, but one of them was uh, leaving the house, and they just had this great big enormous baggy suit on, and for some reason. For decades, that memory stuck uh, with me. And, and so let's wind forward many years. Um, so y- your surprise reconnection with the Steel Brothers was this out of the blue call. Mm. Uh, and w- what followed that that surprise phone call? Obviously, I didn't follow up the call because there was nothing, nothing there to follow up. Um, but he seemed to be intent on following up. Um, was he asking for you to do something specific in your capacity as no, a counsellor? No, no, he just phoned me up and told me about um, all these um, ludicrous suggestions that we were all being killed off by. And was there any reason why he phoned you? Just because were you the local counsellor, or just because he knew you from school? Or uh, well, it, it's a good question. I don't know why he phoned me up, but um, I, I suppose yeah, I'm, I've got a quite a high local profile, so um, I get calls from people from across the whole of Gateshead, not just from the, the area that I'm elected in. So I suppose uh, in that respect, he probably f- thought it was useful to phone me. And maybe he just remembered me uh, from school. What would a normal constituent call be like? What what sort of topics might they raise legitimately with a councillor? Um, well, the, the most recently I've been dealing with quite a few flooding issues. Uh, so people's homes being flooded because the drains are blocked or... Practical yeah. stuff and you're, you're basically hoping to use your influence to direct council services because you presumably as an insider you know how it works. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's exactly it. Uh, we deal with the officers every day, we get in touch with them, we know who to turn to. Yeah, of course uh, in this case there wasn't really nothing, even if he did request something, nothing you could have practically done to, to help him. 
Uh, well, well, absolutely nothing, because it was uh, the, the, what he, he was saying, I knew it was just complete rubbish. At that time, we didn't even have 5G in Gateshead. It wasn't long, though, before he was unsatisfied with merely calling the councillors. In Gateshead, uh, residents are uh, allowed to attend a full council meeting and put a question uh, to that meeting and the appropriate cabinet member, because the council has a cabinet, it's the executive of the council, and the cabinet member responsible for that uh, area will then answer the question. Now the question... And first of all, can I thank you for your question, Mr. Steele. <laughs> the health effects of exposure to radio frequency EMS have been researched and reviewed over several decades. And when the question was put, he got the reply from the cabinet member who said, basically, the street lights are fully compliant with all the rules and regulations. Uh, they are then allowed to ask a supplementary. And the supplementary is really just for the councillor to clarify any issues that uh, have been raised in the answer. Excuse with regard to the side the slide. With... Excuse me, Mr. Hi. Steele. Mr. Steele decided he was going to put a question to uh, full council and he ranted on for quite some time. Please come and have the question. The supplementary question. The supplementary question is... On behalf of all those in the borough who are suffering unexplained... He had to be interrupted two or three times by the mayor to ask him to put the question. Uh, Class one, he Thank you, Mr. Steele. I think we've got the, the supplementary question there. Um, and then he started shouting at the councillors present that people are being injured or killed by the uh, street lighting. We, we have some footage of Mark standing up... Uh, but basically being implored by, I believe, that the, the mayor, who was, she is the presiding officer of, of yeah. the meeting. Is that correct? The, the mayor was remarkably polite uh, and uh, he was constantly having to be pulled back into lines and say, will you ask your question? And then he gave this great long rant where he was shouting at the councillors. And... He, at one point, he, he holds up a, a piece of paper uh, claiming to, to have the names of uh, 150 scientists uh, and he, he shouts at the councillors uh, are you calling these scientists liars? Well I'm very passionate about this I've got near about bleed from this also night from this telecom I think he, he'd lost most of the councillors uh, by the time he'd got to ask, ask his first question so by the time of the supplementary I think we'd, we'd, we'd stopped listening because he was just um, he was just being abusive. Secretly rolled out the IG. Somebody needs to go to prison. There's a crime against humanity. There was a there was a bit of a stink in the air following Mark Steele's council chamber encounter. How did he find you? More by accident than by design. But he went to a community garden uh, near to where I live, uh, where I also happened to rent uh, some land uh, for keeping uh, poultry. And I, I was in the um, the car park of this community garden, trimming the hedges. Suddenly, two of them, the, the, the steels, uh, emerged from the community garden, where apparently they had turned up, having contacted the garden or the organiser of the garden in advance to say that they'd seen lots of um, photos of insects and butterflies at the garden. Uh, and they'd like to come along and um, have a look at the flowers and, uh, and so on. A two-man... Um, Nature survey. The thing is, uh, when they turned up, uh, they had nothing to say about the insects other than the bees, and they had a rant at people there, um, claiming that all the bees were being killed off uh, by 5G radiation coming from, uh, allegedly, from uh, the lampposts. Uh, uh, so they got thrown out, uh, and their paths right, crossed right over mine. I was in the car park, and I knew there was going to be trouble the moment I caught in the corner of my eye them walking into the car park. Out came the camera, uh, which was actually the phone. Uh, they started shouting at me about um, claiming that I was a criminal because I was supporting um, the 5G 
uh, uh, which was killing people. Kind of odd, because in the council meeting, which was presumably the previous time you'd seen them, mm. I, I don't recall you having spoken. Am, am I correct there? I, I didn't speak at that meeting. Their opinion of you within a, a number of days has, has gone from being a, a potential ally to being distilled evil now. I was now just classed as one of those 66 councillors in Gateshead who is part of the council and therefore is enemy number one. Uh, so they, they, they really sort of let rip um, when they were sort of screaming and shouting at me that I was a, a criminal and, uh, and then they were filming it all as well. And I knew immediately that they'd have it on Facebook within minutes. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. O on the the day that they started filming me in the car park, um, you know, we knew that all I had to do was go home, check their YouTube channel, and yeah, hey, there it was. Um, you know, you know, literally minutes after they'd uh, filmed it, the council uh, leadership uh, decided that uh, something had to be done about them. Uh, so you, you weren't the only councillor who was being harassed by these these brothers, were you? Uh, no, there were a number of others. Um, some had um, had to deal with them at uh, the surgeries, and uh, I remember in one case, um, somebody, one of their followers, it wasn't the Steels, but one of their followers uh, turned up and tried to record uh, the, um, the the surgery, which you know, we record it for what reason? Uh, so you know, it's, it was a, a unreasonable um, behaviour. So I guess the point I'm trying to get across here is it wasn't just, let's say, a, an overreaction to two zany brothers. It, it was actually the, the, not only the councillors, but the council staff, people for whom they, they weren't even elected politicians. They're just people who do, uh, you know, m maybe a, a not particularly rewarding, not particularly well-paid job, like mm. fixing lampposts, they were mm. getting harassed as well. And it wasn't just yeah. two brothers, it was perhaps a growing community of, let's say, uh, anti-5G nutters. But there were staff who were uh, harassed by them as well. They, they were trying to uh, just fix, go around their, their job of fixing streetlights. And we had some people who were concerned that, uh, they, that they couldn't ha get their lights fixed in, the, in their street because the 5G campaigners were coming around and ha harassing the, the, the staff. Figured they'd had enough of this situation. Yes, yeah, so the, the final um, trigger for this was when they um, attacked uh, me in the in the car park, uh, verbally attacked me in the car park. And um, I was called into a meeting the next day with the leader of the council um, and other senior officers. Uh, and we um, decided that the, uh, the council had to uh, respond by taking uh, legal action to stop this, uh, the, these, the, the abuse from from happening. So that's what led to the court case uh, at Newcastle Crown Court. They took me to court to try and gag us in fields. The British government tried to gag me because I'm a web and systems expert and I told them these electromagnetic radiation weapons are lethal. I, I was in two minds as to whether we, um, the council was um, doing the right thing by trying to um, gag him because at the end of the day we live in a democracy and if people want to make these um, uh, absurd comments um, then you should be free to be able to, to make them except where doing it in a way which is harassment or a danger to ordinary members uh, of the public uh, so uh, it was the, the, the one bit that the, the, the judge um, rejected was the the bit that gagged him what what he agreed to what the judge agreed to was um that uh, he had to um, refrain from approaching council staff and councillors uh and to stop any um behavior that could be regarded as harassment bizarre thing about how mark presents this case he talks about it a lot he, he effectively talks about it as if it were a victory for him as if it vindicated his yeah expertise uh, and that the judge broadly agreed with him is that what the, the actual outcome of the court case was well the outcome was that he was actually banned from um, dealing with uh, council staff and councillors what's it like today like what do you do you still get to hear from mark Steele and his gang it, do, does he have much impact on the life of a of a busy working councillor uh well he's 
um, not been in touch with me uh, and since just after the, the court case. Uh, and I was one of 66 councillors who received an email uh, from him, uh, which uh, was, uh, to some extent, uh, an abusive email uh, and a clearly in breach of the injunction. So that Since then, they then tried to get us sent to prison for, for sending emails to councillors, which they said I've threatened them because I put in Section 3 of the criminal justice system, which states, which is the law, you can take action. If there's a crime being committed, then you can take uh, certain actions, like defence. It's like a defence in law. And they said that was me threatening them uh, with violence. So that led to a second court case, uh, which uh, he lost, uh, and I was one of the witnesses uh, at that case. Uh, so... Uh, he um, he was. I think he got a, a suspended fine, uh, which uh, if he'd breached the order again, uh, he would have had to have paid that fine and probably been up in court. And after that, we, we'd heard nothing. What he did do was uh, set up a political party called Save Us Now, and they stood candidates in the local elections, including uh, Graeme Steele. Um, Mark Steele never stood, but Graeme Steele did. And they get a, in, in each of the local elections over the past few years, they get a, a handful of votes. You know, it's an embarrassingly small uh, number of votes that uh, he got. Um, he did actually do a, a, an election leaflet uh, for um, Graham, uh, which uh, caused some degree of amusement, I think was probably the best way to describe it, um, amongst local residents, because they, they distributed it around the Wickham area. It was a photograph that looked, uh, on the front page, that look, looked like it was a, a flyer for a Halloween party. Uh, and it was um, just this skull and ridiculous claims about death and dying and 5G and so on. And people actually thought it was a joke uh, and um, we had a lot of people sort of contacted me saying hey have you seen this one winning in our area in fact they, they did actually stand at the uh, general election in Bladen constituency in 2019 and uh, they uh, got only a handful of votes uh, you know, it was only 100 votes you, know, you got 70,000 voters and they got a, appealed to about 100 people so um, the, the electoral prospects weren't great. Yes, yeah, so, so they would have lost their deposit, which is, uh, I guess, the, the system's way of re rebuking them for fielding a, a completely implausible candidate. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was uh, fi £500. And I don't know where they got the £500 from, but that was the, the, the deposit. You've got to pay it um, when you um, put your nomination papers in um, or, or else you, your nomination is rejected. I was touched that you were willing to answer my questions and, and go on the record. Mm. But um, I, I had actually written to a bunch of other Gateshead councillors who had been involved with um, the court cases. Mm. And the typical response that I got from the other councillors was, we don't talk about Mark Steele, which kind of suggested to me that actually, you know, this isn't really something we can joke about. This isn't a laughing matter, that actually some people got hurt, some people were, were put to, to great and like serious inconvenience by the behaviour of mm. these brothers. So it, it's not a joke, is it? Yeah, that, 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 that's absolutely right. It, it w wasn't a joke at the time. Um, the, the, there are two ways you can look at uh, the material that um, Mark Steele produced, or his comments uh, and his videos. And um, one of them is uh, to find the whole thing absolutely ludicrously hilarious because it's he's peddling just utter nonsense. Um, and there's the other side of it, which is actually this guy has a criminal record uh, for shooting a young girl. Um, he He's not somebody um, that um, many people would feel safe with. Uh, and he is um, highly abusive uh, to people, as I know, to my own cost. Uh, and uh, he... Is it so that there's those two sides to him, and for a lot of the councillors, uh, they didn't want to be involved um, 
with the, the, the steels. They just wanted to keep a distance from them uh, and have nothing to do uh, with them. Not wanting to have anything to do with Mark Steele is possibly the most rational response to Mark Steele's aggressive and intimidating behaviour. When I was trying to arrange this interview, I wrote to a number of the Gateshead councillors who were involved with the litigation way back in 2019, and all of them except one wrote back and told me that they wanted nothing at all to do with this process. One of them wrote back to say, I don't talk about that subject anymore, clearly because she had faced a great deal of intimidation and inconvenience because of Mark Steele and his gang. It was only Jonathan Wallace who was willing to, to speak up, and for that I thank him. But um, I, for all the others, I'm sorry to hear about the harm, the, the inconvenience, the damage that Mark Steele has obviously done to your lives. Mark Steele made it impossible for regular people in Gateshead's council to just get their job done. People who were trying to change the lampposts, people whose job it was to service the basic city infrastructure. They all lived in fear of an aggressive intervention from Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. Which is why it's all the more dangerous now that the injunction has run out. That court order preventing Mark Steele from harassing council workers, well, it's over. Mark Steele could, in theory, harass all these people without facing any consequences. And that's something that we should all be quite worried about. Ah, oh, well, if you've got a story to tell, I would love to have you on the show. If you know Mark Steele or you have been influenced or affected by Mark Steele's bad behaviour, I'd love to hear that story. And if, like all sensible people, you would like to have nothing to do with that, well, you could join the conversation on Telegram. The link for that is right at the top of the page. And if Telegram isn't your thing, I, a lot of people would not want to have anything to do with that either, because it's a zany place full of oh, conspiracy truthers. You can just leave a comment. And uh, for those of you, if commenting isn't your thing, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and join me in one week's time for another crazy episode of Mind of Steel.